Okay, so let's get started. Um, hi, I'm Radha Dasari. I'm the Technical Education Lead at Web3 Foundation. Um, today, I mean, I was asked to talk about like Polkadot ecosystem and tooling, uh, but I've chosen, you know, this particular uh, session to, to explain, you know, in a sequence, because you're, you're just graduating like PBA, you know, in, in a couple of days. Uh, you might want to explore, you know, avenues where you could actually develop, right? So one of them is like building like your own parachain and launching it. This is going to give you an idea of like what exactly it takes. And then it opens up uh, a lot more like options for you to explore. So let's see what I have today. Um, let's do this. Ah, this was working just a moment ago. <laughs> Okay, so in today's session, like I'll also, you know, put all the things you've learned so far, like most of the concepts together in terms of like Polkadot as a relay chain and, and you have like these para chains and how all of those like, like you know, come, come together. Um, yeah, so I, I typically start, you know, introduction to Polkadot to diverse audience with this slide. So I just uh, show this Kusama blog that was produced in, in 2019. You know, that's, that's the first proof of concept of a execution sharded blockchain in production uh, environment. So Polkadot is one of those, I'm sure you've heard of like others too, like near protocol or, or yeah. But we, as, as you've seen over the last four weeks, have, have made a lot of design decisions. Uh, one of the key decisions was to use like Rust programming language and then sort of execute the, um, you know, the business logic in, in Wasm, right? So, so you've done that, You're, you were exploring how to build runtimes, you've, you've customized them, you compiled them into this Wasm blob to with, with which like you were interacting. Cool. And yeah, so how, okay, so now that you have a custom runtime, what do you do with it? You know, you could, you could sort of create like your own validator set um, and, and start like your own blockchain uh, running in isolation or you can explore connecting it to like Polkadot network. So, so the network uh, has a billion dollar security. So from block number one, every transaction on your parachain is going to be secured with, with that levels of, uh, you know, economic security, right? So Polkadot network, it produces a block uh, every six seconds. Uh, it's over like 20 million blocks right now. And then let's do yeah, and then it has it hosts like what's called what, what are called parachains, right? So parachains are like these parallel blockchains, you know, the blockchains that are running in parallel. Um, and the idea is that each blockchain is tailored towards a specific use case. Now, I also try to show uh, this snapshot just to give give an idea. Just when I say there are parachains running, you know, on Polkadot, um, this slide sort of gives you a, a you know, the actual uh, thing of what's happening there. Anyway, so you can see individual like parachains, like Asset Hub has about, I don't know, 21 million blocks there. And then you have a bunch of other chains like each each producing blocks. These are all like in, in individual independent blockchains sending like their 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 blocks to Polkadot validators for, for validation. And then we have uh, the system parachains like, um, I don't know how many of you have heard of them. So system parachains, they're considered part of Polkadot protocol. So to become one, you have to go through Polkadot governance, like OpenGov. Um, and we have a bunch of those. I'm sure Sean covered them uh, like yesterday for you. Um, so the latest one to, to go will, that will go live on Polkadot is the code time chain as well as people chain, which takes uh, care of identity. And yeah, so uh, Saraya, uh, my colleague, like would have mentioned about grants program. So over like the past, uh, you know, three, four years, we have, we have funded a lot of projects which have spanned across like several disciplines. Um, and Polkadot SDK, as you've, you've learned, um, is capable of, of, you know, getting all these, if these fields have like a blockchain use case, 
Polkadot SDK has you know, the tools for you to build uh, a solution for that. Fine, so where are we headed? Like uh, today, you know, on Kusama network, which is sort of Polkadot's canary network, uh, core time is live. So Agile core time, you're able to purchase, um, you know, core time like on demand. You can produce a block on demand, or you could also purchase like a bulk uh, core time, which will let you produce blocks 24 by seven. So there are a couple of like really good, uh, you know, well-maintained uh, websites out there that let you like buy core time on Kusama. So in a couple of months, you'll see this live on Polkadot. And that's why I say like this lecture is, is of a very good timing because you are freshly graduating out of PBA. You have access to this feature, uh, which others didn't. Uh, if you were part of like previous PBAs, to become a parachain, you had to uh, auction, you have to participate in an auction, probably raise a crowd loan, you know, do, do a lot of uh, work before like actually, you know, launching it, right? So, so this is gonna let, let you like launch a parachain right after uh, the Agile Core Time goes live on Polkadot. Okay, so, so this is sort of a marketing gimmick. So launch a parachain in two hours. So there's some terms involved. So one is, Actually, it's, it's a fairly accurate number. It includes the time e, uh, your computer takes to compile Polkadot SDK, okay? So that could be from 30 minutes to, I don't know, 30 hours, depending on your computer. So yeah, given that you're, you're, you've compiled like your parachain binary, um, most of the, uh, so I'm, I'm just gonna show you, like you, without even like writing a single line of Rust code, you're able to launch a parachain, what like Bitcoin can do, what Ethereum can do with governance and, and multi-sigs, proxies, account abstraction, whatever. So, so this is all possible in, in this time and um, let's see how, how I did that. Okay, so the entry barrier is not all that low. Uh, I'm sure these are like bigger numbers. We are working on bringing them down. So these were originally the numbers if you wanted to launch a parachain, uh, you know, with the current auction model, uh, with all the crowd loans and, and, you know, enterprise, whatever. So the Agile Core Time, the idea is that a university student or, you know, someone uh, could convince like, like their management to just, you know, have, have a parachain on. So these numbers will definitely go low. So today I'll be showing you a demo with the Rococo, uh, which is like a Polkadot testnet. You're able to get, um, you know, testnet faucet, uh, there's a testnet faucet. Uh, all you need is like 200 uh, Rococo tokens to, to sort of launch uh, your parachain and see, see it working. Um, so there's also another testnet called as Passio. So it will, it's currently just running the uh, runtime of like Polkadot. It's just mirroring it. So when Agile Core Time is, is ready to ship on Polkadot, we're gonna have um, it on Passio as well. So consider like running as a parachain there as well. Okay, so, so what do we do? So the first step, uh, uh, you'll, no matter what you do, you'll sometime be exposed to Polkadot.js UI, even if you want or don't want to. So the first step uh, is to get your, your parachain a unique identifier, right? So on Polkadot or on Rococo, on a relay chain, so you're going to first have to get this identifier, which identifies your parachain. Not only here, but also uh, you've learned about XCM. So when you're giving like XCM multi-location, this would be the, you know, the parachain ID that you'll be using there. So here, um, so the para ID, unfortunately, it's, you can't get your lucky number. So it, it sort of gets incremented every uh, time based on like availability. So right now, today, to, to launch PBA chain, I took like the ID4452 uh, and then 40 uh, Rococo tokens as deposit, fine. So now that I reg registered like an ID for my parachain, um, I, I have to choose like what this chain is going to do, right? So it needs to have some business logic. Um, so there are numerous like uh, templates out there. Uh, what I'm showing you here is like templates from Polkadot SDK itself. So if you downloaded SDK, you'll see a minimal chain with like very minimal like palettes, basic palettes, and then 
a para chain which has like some XEM related config as well. Solo chain, if you don't plan to become like a, a Polkadot para chain, there's a template for that in Polkadot SDK as well. So, and then we have a bunch of um, other templates from, from one from Open Zeppelin. Uh, it has like all the functionalities I, I mentioned earlier, like you have governance, um, multisigs, proxies, uh, assets, you can mint, um, you know, fungible and non-fungible assets there. Yeah, and then uh, this is something fairly new, like pop is sort of bringing all the templates under one umbrella, and then they have a nice command line, explore that as well. And Tansi is actually providing parachains uh, as a service. So that's something you would, you would want to explore if you don't even want to follow like what I'm saying today. Okay, so I've chosen Open Zeppelin template for uh, the PBA chain that I launched today, early this morning. So, um, so it comes with like a very nice documentation. Um, again, like the, the Polkadot documentation is going through an overhaul. So for now, uh, I would say you, you could look at this to while, while launching a parachain. So they've given detailed instructions on, on how to do it and you know all the palettes involved and stuff like that. Okay, so, so the first step, it's a template parachain, right? So what I did was I personalized it. So I just replaced whatever it called like template to, to like PBA um, chain or whatever. And then so I, the node itself took like 17 minutes. So then I can say two hours, 17 minutes. Is this the time I took to, to launch this chain? Fine. Um, so this, this is just uh, compiling the, the open Zeppelin like parachain template node. And you'd want to also like, like uh, personalize it further. Like you want to change the token name to, to like PBA. Uh, you'd like to give decimals to, to that native token. Uh, might want to add a pseudo account. Like, uh, you know, initially your parachain just has you. So probably you'd want some, some privileges to, to make changes on it. Uh, you'd want to also set some accounts with like preloaded balance. You know, some accounts should have some tokens to, to even like start paying for fees uh, on your network, right? So I know you're, you've done an assignment on fee-less blockchain, whatever, but, but here uh, on this chain, like you would need like, it's fee-based. Fee so yeah, and then this one, I think this is a terminology you're not familiar with. So invulnerable is, is like, like the collator node uh, that has the privilege to produce parachain blocks, you know, from the genesis. The moment like the, you bring the parachain uh, live, which collators are, are going to be allowed to produce blocks. And also you can add them like later on. Um, there's like a collator selection palette where you, you could like configure that. Anyway, so, so you have this, I, I made the changes and yeah, so what I did was I made the changes, I recompiled like the node, this takes like very little time. Um, and then I, uh, I produced like, like a JSON file. Okay, so it's, um, it's gonna contain like all the info. Okay, what, what's the protocol ID, what my token symbol, what relay chain I'm connecting to. And if you remember, we reserved the 4452, um, the para ID, right? So I've, I've used that there and then, yeah. So, uh, and this is the command I sort of used to build that chain specification. So this is, this is all the info that is needed for me or this is all the info, uh, any particular node. Uh, you've heard of Omni node, or you know, there's a Polkadot parachain node. It just requires this to be able to, you know, connect to your parachain, uh, collate to it if, if needed, uh, and whatever. So now we have like a representation of, of like, like our parachain. And the next step is to uh, find. So I've compiled my parachain, it's, it's running on my machine, um, how I'm going to make uh, this connection to Polkadot or Rococo, the relay chain, right? So, so that's where you have to have these, these two files generated. One is the genesis uh, state, like what should be the state at the beginning of your parachain? So I mentioned we are pre-funding some accounts, we are giving an account like a, a pseudo access. So all of that uh, is embedded in, in this particular file. And then this is the, the PVF, huh? I don't know. This is the state transition function of, of like parachain, right? So that's where like all your code related to 
governance or staking or um, yeah assets it's all in there and then uh, we have like a bunch of like chain specs so now the next step is so you've reserved the para id now is the time for you to register your your para chain code as well as your genesis state and this is like a very um, costly operation so think of uh, a typical can anyone guess how much is the wasm file size of like polkadot it's actually 1.3 megabytes or so so it's the compressed version and then um, yeah so if you use like super minimal parachain then then it's in in kilobytes but um, this one was like around like 1.2 uh, megabytes or whatever so you upload that yeah so you see para 4452 wasm file it's like around 1.2 megabytes you've learned that blockchain state is like a what do you call it it's redundant and it, it's a costly thing to to have something on there all the time so uploading this this amounts of data will will incur a lot of deposit cost and that's what you saw earlier you know the deposit cost for registering your parachain code as well as like genesis state uh, it's going to cost you fine so after you do that you have like two hours for your parachain uh, you know to be onboarded and this is when I, I took a snapshot. Uh, so now the pa parachain is onboarding. So I registered it. Um, and yeah, so now I'll take some, some time and again, showing you or, or making you appreciate like Polkadot design in general, what you've learned like in early lectures. So this is a slide from Sean. Um, so this is an analogy we, we show when, when we, you know, show how Polkadot validator works. So. Um, so you have like Polkadot uh, Wasm, that, that 1.3 megabyte Wasm that is taking care of like, like validation of uh, uh, parachains out there, processing Polkadot transactions itself, fine. And the validator will also bring in these, these parachain, uh, you know, Wasm files. They, they load them from the state. And then when the collator sends like, like a block to the validator, the uh, uh, the, the validator node is going to play a game, you know, so he, they'll see like transactions happening in, in, in that block. They'll use this, this code to, to sort of process them and see whether they're, um, you know, compliant to, to, to this straight transition function. So basically what we did was the PBA chain wasm code is now in the state and then it's available for the Rococo validators to be fetched. And, and for that to be available, there's like this two hours uh, onboarding process. So I can also show you the, how it, it works on Polkadot. So you, clearly you can see these are individual like parachains. You have Asset Hub, you have Collectives, Bridge Hub or whatever. So each chain is, is producing a block and that block is being sent to these uh, set of validators. So there are like five of them and they're getting like shuffled like very often, right? So that's the idea of like Polkadot's uh, shared security. So it's hard to guess which validators will be uh, assigned to you know, which parachain. That's why you can't make a guess and, and you'll have to attack the whole network. And that's why we say every parachain is going to uh, enjoy the privilege of, of like the entire security of the network. And that's the reason. And this randomization, um, yeah, is the key to it. And, and we have gone even a bit further with like Jam. Uh, tomorrow, I think Gav will talk about like Safrol and how this sort of like even uh, is improved further. Fine, so now what collators, like the, the node that I'm running on my computer right now, so that would be a collator node. So it's listening to the transactions, uh, you know, I send to it. So if I, I'm gonna ask one of you, like your address to, to airdrop some edu tokens or like PBA tokens like later on, keep them handy. But, but the point being, if I initiate a transaction here, um, you have, uh, so the collator is the one that, that has the transaction pool. It's going to listen to all of them. And when it gets a chance to like package these, these blocks and, and send it to like Polkadot validator, um, it makes a connection to, to those validators that are sh getting shuffled on, on like the relay chain. So the connection is made, the, the collator, like, like the block is sent, uh, and received at the validator end and so I just want to take this time to, to rehash like, like what you learned about 
um, you know, PDF and, and like state on like parachain, how you express it to the relay chain validators. Yeah, so you can think of this as the state of, of the parachain, right? So there are account balances. If you have like some democracy, then, then there's some info in there, some voting info or whatever. So there's babe or, or some, yeah. So you can think of this as like, like the state of the parachain. It's a Merkle tree. Um, now, when I'm just like airdropping some tokens or, you know, sending tokens to an address, so the interaction is only happening between a couple of them. So rest of the info stays like unchanged. So you're going to see that the hashes of the unchanged ones, you know, they're, they're going to be the same. You need not send all of this info. The info that you'll send as part of like this, this P, uh, the PVF is like um, this one, like, you know, the account that sent like, like a balance to a different, like, different account, uh, maybe a change in, in like referenda palette or whatever. Fine. So yeah, so basically you're sending like a, a prune uh, state uh, in a way, and then, um, and the relay chain already has the state transition function, right? So, so the Polkadot validators will plug in like PBA chains uh, uh, WASM code, and then they're going to run this transaction through and, and make sure like this transaction happened properly. Fine. So. All this theory is good. Now let's see how to run this uh, this collator node, right? So, so a collator node by default they run a full node of your parachain itself, and then they run sort of a light client of the relay chain. Uh, you see, like there are two nodes that are running. One is the collator node, and then one is the relay chain node. Relay chain node because the parachain needs to know which of its transactions is final, and the only way it gets to know is by sneaking into like relay chains like um, you know um, yeah so basically looking at grandpa uh, uh, votes on, on the relay chain the parachain knows like whether it's block number so and so uh, is sort of finalized or not so fine so this this collator node is going to launch like two nodes uh, you could either do it like open zeppelin way but this is pretty slow so previously it has taken me like around six or seven hours to sync with the actual Rococo chain. Um, so instead I've used uh, like Polkadot parachain, uh, you know, node available on Polkadot SDK. Uh, yeah, maybe that also gives the option, but this one gives the option to directly connect to uh, Rococo relay chain via like RPC. So I don't have to like spin up a Rococo relay chain node that has to sync with like, I don't know, uh, 10 million blocks or whatever. It takes a lot of time. So now I, I have direct access to, to the latest blocks on, on, on Rococo. Uh, and then my collator, it, it need not even sync because I, I haven't even produced a block. So, so we are still at block zero. Fine. So what I did was I started this collator for that, like the command I gave. Uh, so there are a bunch of like, like text there. The important one is I fed the Polkadot parachain collator node with, with my raw parachain spec pba.json. Remember, the, I gave like the uh, para ID and then a bunch of things about like my token or whatever. And once I, I connect to this collator node locally, so this is like local host uh, 8844 or whatever, yeah, 9944 or, or whichever port I assigned to it. So I see that I've pre-funded some, some accounts with uh, uh, 3.3 or 3.4 million PBA tokens. Um, last block, zero seconds, because we haven't even produced a block. Uh, fine. So the collator is, is ready. Yeah. Uh, usually, for example, when we start a validator node, we have a flag for dash dash validator. Uh, maybe I'm just missing something, but I can't see a... Like, what is the flag that specifies that this is a collator node? So Polkadot parachain itself is, is like a, a collator style node. And oh. it's just asking for, hey, what's the chain spec for, for that particular parachain, right? So it's sort of abstracting away the collator flag. So underneath it, it's like a, a node with, with like that collator flag. Cool. So, so now we have uh, a PBA chain that's running on my computer with so much balance. Let's see what happens now. Now, the thing is, like in Genesis, I, I set what's called this 
invul invulnerables, right? Like the, so the relay chain sees this collator and like, who are you to produce this block for on behalf of this parachain? So to answer that question, the collator node should have a key that was set uh, as, as like in, in, invulnerable, like, like key, whatever we set initially in, in the genesis. So for that, what we do is there are two things. One is one key is going to be uh, dealing with the collator's identity. So we don't want to reveal that seed phrase to anybody. Okay, so, so that's given. Um, so there were instances where some parachains used like a default Alice and Bob keys or whatever, and then were, were surprised when somebody moved like tokens from, from their chain or whatever. So, um, so you'll have to like, when, when you see the open Zeppelin, uh, you know, uh, config, you'll see Alice and Bob uh, keys there, remove all of them. You put like your own keys, like something maybe from hard wallet. Uh, for the collator identification. And the other one is called the session key. So the session key is meant to be rotated often because you're actually loading your, your seed phrase onto your machine. Like your machine has a key store and then your, your session key is going to be living on that particular uh, machine. Uh, so typically it, it's a good practice for, for validators or collators to, to rotate these session keys. But anyway, so in the Genesis we already said hey, somebody with this ID and this session keys is going to knock on your door and then give you like a, a parachain uh, block. So please validate it to the Polkadot uh, or Rococo validators. So we did that and then, and we are able to do this through, via like a, a RPC connection to our node, okay? So you, you're able to set stuff in there and this requires like unsafe RPC options or whatever. Um, there are better ways to do this, but through Polkadot.js, you, you are able to set these keys in your key store. Fine, so the next thing is, let's see if, if a basic transfer sort of works on, on this PBA chain. So what I did was, both are my accounts, like one is the edge chain account and the other one is, is my account. So I sent like 1,000 uh, PBA tokens to myself, and then now this transaction is in the transaction pool. So can anybody tell me how to process this tran transaction. Now I have a collator, I made a transfer, sitting in the transaction pool. When will this transaction get executed? Yeah. Yeah, you have the mic there. The transaction will get executed when the validator inside the relay chain actually validates the POV and, and yeah, so and, and I, I've waited for like five minutes and this transaction is not going getting processed. So what am I missing here? So the validator is not still accepting my transaction. Oh, the, the validator is not accepting your transaction. I mean, he's not even accepting the 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 block that I've produced with with this transaction. And the reason for that is is agile core time, right? Like you have to pay the yeah. the relay chain somehow. You you need to either by uh, block space, like, like for producing like one block, or you should have access to the bulk core time to be able to produce like block, you know, every 12 seconds. Very soon with async backing, like, like six seconds, some parachains are starting to, uh, yeah, so, so sort of uh, implement that feature. So what I did was I went to Rococo and then I told the Rococo network, hey, so this is my, um, so this is my pa parachain, like 4452. So that's the ID of, of my parachain. And then I'm going to the on-demand assignment provider palette and then uh, having this place order allow death. Okay, so, so we have like, like these very intense naming in like Polkadot SDK. So, so there's place order uh, uh, allow death, whatever. And then you, you specify like a maximum um, amount you're willing to pay for it. So of course it won't use up everything. It'll only use like like what's um, yeah what what what's the current value for for that um, on-demand block production. So when that goes through, you'll you'll see that this transaction goes through on on like your parachain. And then what happened? So we produced our our first block. So we have the first block. So Educolator was like the identity uh, that I had for for the collator. Uh, which had like those session keys. So, so this is shown. 
uh, the session key is, is not shown. That's why you see like validator identities um, like Binance or, or I don't know, Kraken or others in, in like Polkadot uh, relay chain. So those are tied to, to those uh, accounts on your hardware wallet and then they keep rotating the session keys of it. So the transaction went through, so I got like, like a thousand tokens uh, and all of those events are, are registered here. Okay, so I would say with, with everything uh, involved, like it took me three years, you could actually go and see the snapshots of Rococo uh, block numbers. Uh, it shows that I launched it today. You can also look at the events on Rococo. Uh, the parachain was registered this morning. So it's not that difficult. Like, you know, you can have a Bitcoin style, Ethereum style, like, like blockchain that is running. Uh, in, in three hours, like using Polkadot SDK, you're able to, to create this blockchain. And then the, the problem is I can't let you connect with your Polkadot.js to, to the node that is running on my machine because I haven't set up like this secure connection. So that would be the next step, right? So you'd want to give uh, your RPC node like, like a URL and then you're, you should be able to connect to it. Um, so unfortunately, I didn't have that much time today to, to do, do all of that. But uh, I can show something that we have already did with what we call EduChain. So the goal of that project is to just show people like how seamless it is to like launch like a production grade like blockchain on, on like Polkadot. Uh, so these are the steps that I would say would be logical next uh, after you, you've done your first transaction on your parachain. So set up the remote uh, RPC node, integrate with Asset Hub. This comes with a lot of perks whatever PBA token I had right now, it's just in my local network. But integration with Asset Hub is going to allow me to register my token as a foreign asset on Asset Hub, create pools for it, pools with like DOT token, or like if I'm on Kusama, like Kusama token, pay for all the XCM fee or, or you know, any fee with my token instead of having like KSM, right? So, so that pool is going to take care of all of that. So, so that's a logical thing to do if you're launching a parachain, uh, add additional pallets, you know, maybe put some identity pallet in there. Um, and you could, if you do that, then the next logical step is to do on-chain upgrade. You can also do that uh, on this collator node. You already have the pseudo key with that you can set code and, and upgrade your, your parachain. And the last thing, like if, if this doesn't suit like your use case, you develop your own custom pallet which is what you do, did as one of the assignments. So you could totally do this, right? So, so right after um, core time goes live on Polkadot or it's already live on Kusama, you're able to write those applications you're, you've been willing to or you know, dreaming of like writing so long and then change the world ultimately. Okay, so, so the remote uh, RPC node setup, yeah, it, you, you need to purchase like, like a domain for it and then maybe like run it on, on a cloud instance, uh, run it as a, as a service, so it's going to uh, accept like, like connections from uh, remote users. Um, so this is the Web3 edge chain, like, like RPC. We'll, we'll play around with it uh, a little bit if we still have time. Um, yeah, we still have time. So yeah, so at this point, I'll, I'll do something practical rather than just showing you these slides, let me show my browser. Fine. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, so we are in is that, yeah, PBA chain like Rococo. Uh, yeah, question. It says the last block was three hours ago. Is that simply because of the core time thing or? Uh... Because I'm producing it on demand. So I produced okay. the block three hours ago. Yeah. For this session, I put all the screenshots in the presentation, okay. and now we're going to produce another block here. So let's do it. Um, okay, so let's go to accounts. What's it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think, the, again, like the Polkadot.js API, you know. You know how it works. So, so I, I don't think this is async backing enabled, though. So, so. All right, so let's do one more. Transaction here, accounts. Okay, where do I have? I have it here. So, 
I'm going to send myself even more tokens. Okay, I need to. So. Okay, so now the transaction is in the transaction pool. Um, it it stays there. People could connect to this this RPC from from like their machines as well. They can initiate transactions. All of those are going to be accumulated in the transaction pool. Now, the, a clever way to to design like an app you, on on like an on-demand parachain would be, you know, the, the interface will also give you an option to to finalize this transaction. You know, so what what that wallet or or that UI would do is, it will also. Um, Okay, so this is getting annoying. Where is my? All right, so let's go. Yeah. So it will also sort of uh, pay the Rococo tokens required required to produce a block for for this parachain. So let's go here. For this, you would need to have like uh, Rococo tokens on 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 whichever account you're you're using to. Uh, produce the block. Now the beauty of this is this is not controlled just by by the parachain team. Anybody can produce blocks on on behalf of that parachain if you set it that way. Um, let me go to the yeah on demand. Okay, so by now I memorized how many zeros I have to put here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. So. Four four five two right, and submit transaction. Okay, I'm gonna sign the transaction. This is a nice time for me to advertise my project, like our team's project. So, it's the same Open Zeppelin template, like we've we've tested like extensively. Um, like all the features, like asset hub integration, um, you know, balance transfers, whatever. Um, so we have already produced 162 like on-demand blocks. So there was a lot of testing done done on this chain. Um, so yeah, so you are able to. Uh, you can also connect to it. So this is the. Um, yeah, so that's the RPC URL. Uh, if you go to the. Uh, this one, like web3 at your chain dot xyz, so you can actually connect to to the um, the node that we're running on on cloud right there, and then put your transactions in, and and sort of like like finalize it like later. Fine. So let's go here. Okay. So then I want to. Just give you a glimpse of like what's possible, uh, you know. So till here it's fine. So any, any further you have to go, you need to understand some some tooling. For instance, let's say you're trying to register your your asset as a foreign asset on Asset Hub. So this requires like an XCM message. Uh, you you've had this XCM like workshop where you've learned a lot of stuff and understood how it's done. Um, yeah, so the cross-chain testing, there are, there are multiple tools out there in, in ecosystem. So personally, we used uh, Akala Chopsticks. So, so it sort of lets you um, compile like your, your Wasm blob for your parachain. Uh, you know, you'll have Wasm for um, Rococo, Asset Hub, or whatever. And then they can like directly talk to each other rather than spinning up like the whole nodes, which, which is what like ZombieNet does. So it's very lightweight and it just Tests like the runtime, and it, it's much more um, easier when compared to the other one. Um, so when, yeah. So there is also uh, app development. Uh, has anyone here heard of like Appellon? Some of you. So so this this doesn't even like like give you uh, a choice, right? Like they already pre-select like some. Um, Chains or some services like you know storage. We selected this, um, so they just expose it as an API through which like you're able to build apps. So under underneath you have like the Web3 technology, but it's sort of masked away from you. Uh, there are also like if you're interested in mobile apps, there are like libraries to to do so. 
uh, if you're interested in games, uh, there's a lot of, uh, um, yeah, so with mythical games launch and then we, we've had like a bunch of games which uh, developed traction. So, so a lot of work is, is going into bootstrapping like gaming ecosystem on Polkadot. There's even like a gaming bounty. So if, if you're interested in uh, uh, accessing. Yeah, and then uh, a bunch of like APIs uh, in Python or um, yeah, Substrate API. And then we have the author of Polkadot API in, in the classroom right now. Um, and yeah, we also have like Polkadot.js. Um, yeah, and then I want to show you like, don't reinvent wheel. There's a lot of like libraries that, that were funded for development through like the three foundation grants program. So one of the key requirements of the grants program is that they have to submit the, the deliverable as like an open source code. So Web3 Foundation actually forks it and then keeps it for everybody, uh, you know, as a, a resource to, to get started from. So you have all these categories. So we keep track of like, um, you know, all the individual GitHub repositories. So they have like this status check uh, showing whether people whether they are actu actually like developing it or not. So, so take a look at that. There's plenty of, of uh, code out there for you to bootstrap like your project, irrespective of like which, which project you're, you're picking uh, with, with a blockchain use case. And also make sure, like if you're building like an open source project, add a PR to the wiki and then sort of get it listed here for, for others to, to view. Um, let's go there. Yeah, and then I, I mentioned Asset Hub is the place where uh, all the action is happening now. So a lot of liquidity is expected to pour in either through um, like, you know, ecosystem activity. We also have a, a bridge to Ethereum that was live this week. So, so we're expecting a, a lot of action on, on this particular parachain. Um, for those of you who followed the ecosystem, you'll understand why we have like 1.3 million accounts on Asset Hub and only 133 active accounts. Uh, the reason for this is somebody decided Polkadot is dead and then they launched a token called as dead. And because that token had to be on Asset Hub, Asset Hub had to have like an existential deposit. So they emptied their, their pocket and sent like the tiny 1.1 dot or 0 0.01 dot to all of these accounts. So that's why you have so many active accounts on, on Asset Hub. Um, uh, yeah, so basically those are the stats for, for Asset Hub right there. Um, and the beauty of, of this is, you know, with, with all the optimizations we've done with Polkadot SDK, it has to show up somewhere, right? So, so you can actually see that on, on the Binance uh, USDC uh, transfer page. So you could actually see Polkadot Asset Hub is uh, 10,000 times cheaper than Ethereum, 1,000 times cheaper than Solana, 100 times cheaper than Optimism, Basically, it's the cheapest, like it's the lowest value possible on that page. Um, and all of that is made possible with, with you know, all the technology that you've learned over the past four weeks. Um, yeah, it, it supports like both fungible and, and non-fungible assets. Uh, right now, I think this, this is a bit incorrect. Like I've, maybe I, this, this was like from a previous talk, but I think there are around 130 tokens that are minted on Asset Hub right now. Um, and yeah, so it, it's possible for the Asset Hub also to have existential deposit in either USDC or USDT. So it's called like a, what's called um, sufficient asset. You know, if you just have this balance, even then like you'll, you'll have an active account. You don't need DOT uh, to do stuff. And this is very um, contrasting to other ecosystems, right? Like so, so if you have to do something on, on Ethereum, you have to have Ether, Ether token. So whereas Polkadot doesn't really impose like DOT on you, yes, you, if you have DOT, you pay a fee in that, but if you have some other token, you're able to use that as well. And Asset Hub is a system chain, so it's actually part of Polkadot protocol. And it comes with a lot of integrations, so that's the beauty of it. If you become a parachain, you integrate with Asset Hub, you're sort of proxy integrating with, with all of the others as well on, on there. So it, it's good to have that connection. Uh, now, Previously, the connection to Asset Hub used to require like governance. Right now, it's like a permissionless call. So you could just say, hey, I want to establish connection with you. And Asset Hub lets you connect in a bi-directional bi way. 
Um, and this is important for agile core time. If we are expecting thousands of, of these on-demand parachains to get onboarded, we shouldn't place a lot of barriers on them, starting with deposit or having access to system chains. So, so this is easy. We already tested it on Rococo. So EduChain already has like a connection with Rococo Asset Hub. Um, yeah, the XCM activity is sort of picking up uh, on Asset Hub, and then there there was also this thing that you know uh, the deposits on it were were not friendly for artists. So so we brought them like significantly lower from 10 dot to actually 0.2 dot. Um, and two dot for metadata, it's brought down to point zero zero five dot. So, so if you know of any artists, just show them like like Asset Hub, uh, Coda dot. It's like a nice um, a UI. Let them like like mint stuff on it and and make this one popular because it's so cheap. Uh, in terms of bridges, like uh, uh, a lot of progress was made in 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 sort of bridging protocols trustlessly. So. Uh, the idea is that the bridge hub will always host uh, code that is not multisigs, but it's more mostly uh, trustless communication. Meaning, Polkadot will run the light client of of the protocol it's bridging to, and the other protocol is going to have probably smart contracts that is running a light client of, of Polkadot, right? So, so if you heard of this beefy term, so it's bridge efficiency enabling finality yielder protocol or whatever. So, so that's uh, that's the Basically, it's to enable bridge efficiency. Like uh, grandpa proofs are like heavy. I don't know if you got to do the grandpa activity during this PBA. Uh, so, so it's possible to to make them even more concise and and with like beefy, you're able to like like talk to each other. Um, so Bridge Hub currently hosts two bridges. One is one is to uh, Ethereum and the other one is to Kusama. So both are like trustless. Um, yeah, I, I showed this project to you already. Uh, and finally, what you should look forward to is the concept of elastic scaling. So this is the one of the coolest features I think for for like Polkadot and and you know Polkadot SDK in general, because th this is really bringing the existing cloud model. Like you know in Amazon, if if your app has a lot of traffic, you know it it, it assigns more resources for it to to sort of um, you know crunch that that activity. So Ethereum sort of failed during the CryptoKitties movement, like it basically crashed that network, right? So we don't want such such moments on, on like Polkadot. Uh, first of all, like we have uh, an implementation that's actually, people try to spam it during the, uh, what was that called? Ordinals on, on Polkadot or whatever. It didn't even hit like the block capacity. But if, if Polkadot has some activity and, and it's getting uh, too much, you're able to, if you're a parachain on Polkadot, you're able to access for additional cores on demand, uh, address that, that activity. Let's say you're, you're hosting a million NFT airdrop. You do this, you use this activity, make users happy, and then after you're done, you, you sort of uh, just stick to like one core. And yeah, so that is my contact details. Uh, happy to answer questions or, or yeah.